Hello guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back. So guys, uh, so far we have seen um, uh, Selenium interview questions and uh, the project related questions and everything. Now the most important thing is that TestNG interview questions. And if you are going with, uh, I mean if you're going for interview for Selenium and if you're using Selenium with Java, so definitely they are going to ask a TestNG question. They are going to check. 99% of the companies in the industry they are working upon test ng so obviously that uh, you have to make sure that you are very good in test ng and uh, if you can clear test ng interviews and everything then i think you are good to go okay so the there is a different levels of interviews guys the first is like tell me about yourself and your experience and project summary and everything then they will start with basics of selenium right that um, the basics of selenium and advanced selenium that we have covered and then the third level is test ng so definitely they will ask test ng interview questions if you have worked upon uh, bdd frameworks like cucumber and all uh, they will be asking questions on cucumber also but uh, today we will be discussing about the top 30 questions i think uh, these are the best one of the best questions i have seen and uh, i prepared a different uh, content accordingly on the interview questions as well as the answers i'll share this document with you all but guys if you can cover these 30 questions i think then you are good to go you can crack easily okay until unless they are not asking some out of the box uh, test ng questions okay cool so the first question is guys that what is test ng so they will ask like uh, what do you mean by test ng and what is test ng exactly so first of all test ng is a testing framework okay test next generation the full form is test next generation it is a framework which is used by developers to write their unit level test cases as well as integration level test cases so that's why we are using i mean that's why we are using in selenium also because in selenium we are using java and it's dedicatedly designed for java java unit testing framework okay i cannot use test ng for uh, .NET or ruby or something in .NET we have n unit. In PHP we have PHP unit, but in Java we have either J unit and Test ng. So Test ng is a Java testing uh, framework, which is used to write your unit level test cases. Now you can use your uh, in function in Selenium also to write the functional test cases, right? So you can write and you can design the test cases in a very systematic way. You can achieve so many things that uh, parameterization and a lot of features are available. But what is test ng? Simple, it's a framework and it's uh, available in the form of jar file. How will you set up uh, test ng and everything? That I have already covered uh, these things in the test ng tutorial and everything. So you guys, you can use this. You can go to my channel and go to my go to this playlist. This is my channel name. Go to the playlist. And this is the five tutorials are available the test ng framework with selenium just click on it and then you will see all these five tutorials are available step by step I have given all the you know all the examples and how to set up and install test ng in Eclipse and everything I have given right the second question is that what are the advantages of test ng I mean evergreen question that definitely they are going to ask what, okay what are the different advantages with test ng so the first test ng advantage is that it provides first of all parallel execution of test methods okay in test ng.xml file you can define one parallel attribute is equal to methods or class and you can define that thread count also so we can do parallel execution let's see you have thousand test cases and uh, you can execute with the three different browsers or four different browsers right so that you can reduce the time the execution time so parallel execution we can do it allows a different uh, defined dependency of one test method over other method guys again i have one login method i have one uh, home page method if login method is getting failed there is no point to execute your home page method right so there is no point to execute home page method and registration method and search method if login is itself getting failed right so we can create a dependency between these two methods these two test methods okay so we have i have already covered all these okay test and uh, depends on method and everything in this part one and part two both guys please refer these two tutorials because today i'm not going to cover because these are just interview questions so i can give you the references how to provide the answers and everything you can do that 
it allows to assign priority of the test cases obviously priority of the test methods we can define priority keyword so they will ask you how to define the priority simple priority keyword is there priority equal to one two three you can define the priority with at the rate test annotation so you have to write like this at the rate uh, test and inside the bracket you have to write priority keyword priority is equal to one <clears throat> it means the first priority will be given to this particular test case like this <clears throat> okay it allows grouping of test methods into test groups yes it's one of the best feature that let's see i have 100 test cases are there i want okay these 10 test cases are related to search feature next 10 test cases are related to registration feature five test cases are related to login feature so you can define the grouping also okay so one groups keyword is there you can define like like this comma groups is equal to okay in double quotes like see, this is related to login something like this so with the help of groups keyword you can define the grouping also it supports the parameterization test cases using at the rate parameters annotation yes at the rate parameters annotation is already there guys so i have already covered that how to use uh, at the rate parameters annotation in this particular session so you can use uh, at the rate parameters annotation in your test cases as well as uh, you can define the parameters in your testng.xml file also so this is one of the important feature now the most important feature that you can perform data driven testing with the help of at the rate data provider so they will ask you how what is the purpose of data provider or how will you what do you mean by data provider or how will you perform the data driven okay we will fetch the data from excel file and with the help of data provider we will execute that same test case again and again with the different set of data okay that is called parameterization so we can achieve parameterization we can achieve the data driven testing with the help of at the rate data provider i have already covered this thing okay this topic over here in part two i have already covered guys so please have a look sorry this part three data provider in a very systematic way i have explained so most of the data provider question will be covered over here okay and it has different assertions yes amazing feature that it provides a lot of lot of assertions I can give you some assert because we have an assert class available you can see that this is the assert class which is provided by testng assert dot assert equals assert dot assert true assert dot assert not null okay there are a lot of assertions are available to validate it provides soft assertion as well as hard assertion also right so assertion library provided by testng detailed html reports obviously this is a very good feature that it, uh, it gives you uh, index.html file as well as uh, proper failure xml file also or html file also it will give you okay index.html file and for failure test cases also you can generate a separate uh, html file right and uh, it can be easily integrated with jenkins which will give you the proper report in in, in the form of html you can generate your customized report also with the help of testng listeners okay so testng listeners is also one of the important feature i would write testng listeners okay to to generate the custom logs to generate the to create the custom reports and everything okay so these are the very good uh, test ng advantages and features you have to explain like that only guys okay now what are the annotations are available in test ng very important question and very simple just please explain like that so we have different annotations prerequisites annotation as well as post condition annotations so these are prerequisites like the annotation which is starting with before it means these are prerequisites add the before test add the before class add the before method add the before suite and post condition means add the after post means later after add the after test add the after class add the after suite and add the after groups and we have one add the test annotation which is to write the test cases we have another annotation that is called add the data provider okay for data driven point of view we have at the rate data provider also we have at the rate parameters also okay to define the parameters in a xml file and we can take those parameters with the help of at the rate parameters so you can refer these all the annotations i have covered in these tutorials i'm not going to cover as of now obviously it will take time so you can see all these examples over there Next question is, can you arrange the below test ng XML text from parent to child? Although it's not very important, but they might ask you at a time of interview that what is the structure of test ng.xml file? 
so the correct structure is that first it will start with a suite then test then we have classes then we have inside the classes we have class and then we have different methods so i can give you the practical example over here that uh, you can take any example of testng.xml file this is a testng.xml file then we have suite level but make sure sometimes they might ask you that before the c12 what exactly the things you have to define we have to define the eczema uh, xml schema that this is the xml version is equal to 1.0 and what exactly the doc type so guys these two lines are important if you don't write these two lines it will give you xml parsing exception okay xml exception it will give you so make sure that sometime they might ask this question also okay just above the suite level what are the different things you have to define so you have to define the xml uh, schema that is your xml version and doc type suite also we have to define okay after that we have suite level if you want to define any listener you can define listeners like this so i just commented and then we have test okay we have to give the test name and then we have classes and then we have class and inside the class if you do if you want to define any method you can define the method also so this is the proper sequence although not very important interview question but they might ask you at a time of interview the format of xml file how to create testng.xml file simple right click on your uh, main resources package or any package right click go to new and click on file and give the file name is testng.xml file okay you just need to write testng.xml file and define all these attributes over here over here simple this is how we create the testng.xml file and how to execute how to run through eclipse simple right click and run as okay testng suite it provide that option testng suite make sure that okay you have added testng library in your project and the testng plugin also that you have downloaded from eclipse marketplace so how to do these two things i have already covered in part 1 guys okay make sure that okay this is your project and testng library is added so right click go to properties java build path project libraries and add library make sure this testng library that you have added over here like this okay if you are using maven project make sure that in pom.xml file you have added the dependency of testng.xml file okay so this is how we execute and create testng.xml file now what is the importance of testng.xml file so testng.xml file is the heart of the execution this is also called runner class okay so in any project either it is your selenium project or any api automation project if you are using testng so testng is the main the configuration file okay for the complete test uh, automation suite so dif different kind of configuration that okay what is your suite name okay what are different listeners you want to define what are different test case name is there and what are different classes you want to include the package wise and the class wise and the method wise so it's a complete configuration file is there at the suite level what are different if you want to do an, any parallel testing okay at the test level okay so uh, okay all the parameters if you want to define so this is the heart of the uh, test ng framework in which you will define all the configuration with respect to your execution you will define over there okay as i told you that test ng xml file allows you to ex exclude the execution of the test methods if you don't want to execute any test method or test case you can ignore it from a test ng class it allows the pass parameter to the test cases you can pass the parameter you can define the parameters over here okay and uh, allow add groups dependencies also you can define priorities also sometimes you can define generally we don't prefer to use the priority in testng.xml okay parallel execution as i told you the thread count we have to give for parallel execution and we have to give for uh, uh, parallel parallel attribute also we have to define over there okay parameterize the test cases also with the help of add the right parameter test case i mean at that parameter annotation we can define in testng.xml so these are the importance of features of testng.xml file okay how to pass parameter through testng.xml file so in testng.xml file simple we have to define the parameter like this that uh, simple you have to use this attribute at the rate parameter name equal to browser let's say i want to define browser equal to firefox so either you can define this browser attribute in config.properties file or you can define in testng.xml file also like this at the rate parameter name equal to browser value equal to firefox let me check 
I have already covered this thing in, in this tutorial. I'll share with you guys. Just a minute. Let me check the latest in the code itself. So we have created this project and uh, just a minute. Let me show you the XML directly. Okay. So see, if you see, if I'll maximize it. See, so this is a parameter I've defined, two parameters I have defined guys parameter URL and email ID and browser name also you can define so if you see further like uh, immediately after suite we have test and then two parameters I have defined URL and email ID and you can define parameter name is equal to browser also you can define so please go through this video it's very very simple guys right now I'm not able to explain because it's very uh, lengthy topic but you can use like this okay and once you go into the code See, this is the at the rate parameter annotation you have to define and you have to define what are the different parameters are coming from testng.xml file. At the rate parameters, URL, comma, email ID. And this is the format, guys. So, guys, why I'm focusing so much on this particular tutorial, uh, on this particular thing? Because it's a very famous interview question. They will ask you, what do you mean by at the rate parameters? What do you, how to define parameters in testng.xml file? And it's very simple. Hardly two lines of things you have to remember at the right parameter and in testng.xml parameter attribute you have to remember that's it very simple but how to do that please guys you have to go through it okay so this is how we define what is testng assert and list out testng assertions what do you mean by testng assertions so testng assertion is is a verification point is a validation point that uh, if it will check the test case is getting passed or not it is getting passed or failed okay so we can put assertion anywhere inside that see I can put the assertion if you check this home page test I have put one assertion over here at the end of the test case and in the middle of the test case case, case also I can write okay like let's see login login method is there login test method is there and uh, I have written that okay username password and click on login button and after that I'm putting one assertion that I'm able to log in successfully or not right so assertion is the validation point without assertion we should not write any test case otherwise every time it will be passed otherwise right yeah. or every time it will enter username password and clicking on sign in button but how will you verify that user has logged in successfully or not in that case we have to put assertion guys okay so there are different types of assertion um, you know methods are available in assert class always remember see this is the assert okay this is the assert class you can see that this c c means assert class test change dot assert it provide different assertion methods so if you see assert dot and press control space these are the different assertions are available assert equals right guys assert not equals okay assert null okay assert true assert not same so these are the different assertions are available. I have listed out assert equals, assert true, assert false, assert null, assert not null. These are the assertions are available in testng. Okay. What is soft assert in testng? I have already explained, right? What do you mean by soft assert? Soft assert means it will just collect all the errors. Okay. So let's see. I have. I'll give you one very quick example. You have to explain like that. Let's see. I have this test case T1, right, guys? And this test case is starting here and ending here. I have different uh, lines, line number one, two, three, four, five, six lines are there in this particular test case. Let's see, first line is getting passed, okay? Second line, I put one assertion that is called hard assertion. I'll write say HA. In the third line, I write soft assertion, SA. And then in the fourth line also, I'll write SA and then SA and then soft assertion as a now if i execute this test case first it will say that okay line number one entering something that you're doing some send keys okay send keys option but okay actually i'm performing over here then it will do some hard assertion that simple assert dot assert equal so what exactly it will do if hard assertion is getting passed then only it will jump to line number three if hard assertion is getting passed 
then only go to line number three else what exactly do else terminate the test case else terminate the test case and test case will be failed immediately test case will be failed okay so this is the property of hard assertion what do you mean by soft assertion now let's see hard assertion got passed it will jump to line number three now if it is getting passed fine it will jump to line number four if it is getting failed doesn't matter it will still it will jump to line number line number five now it will let's see passed fine it will jump to line number six and let's see this is getting failed fine and the program is over now what will happen okay after that what exactly we have to write we have to write like this soft assert dot assert all this is the method that please assert all the soft assertions what are the different errors are there so the property of soft assertion is that if soft assertion is getting passed fine it will jump to next line that is fine but if soft assertion is getting failed still it will jump to next line okay but the property of hard assertion is that if the hard assertion is getting failed it will not jump to next line immediately it will be terminated okay if hard assertion is getting failed immediately it will be terminated guys it will not jump to line number three or four or next line right but in soft assertion if all the soft assertions are getting failed it will collect all the soft assertion and then it will mark it fail and then it will give you the error that okay these are the different soft assertion three four or five assertions got failed so that is the property of soft assertion okay so this is like that we have to explain at a time of interview and 100 percent they will ask you what do you mean by soft assertion what is the difference between hard assertion and soft assertion okay how will you put soft assert how will you put soft assertion right like that what is hard assertion i have already explained what is hard assertion what is exception test <coughs> in test ng now guys sometimes what happens that okay what do you mean by exception test test ng gives an option that uh, if any exceptions are coming that automatically test ng will uh, will say that okay that any exception is coming we have to tell that uh, we are expecting this particular exception okay so we have an attribute that expected exceptions so we know that we have an at the rate test annotation and we have on this test t1 and we know that okay this uh, in t1 we are expecting sometimes that uh, let's see in t1 we are expecting element not found exception so this is the expected expect uh, you know exception from this method t1 method so we have already defined that we are expecting this exception if any this kind of exception is coming please ignore don't make your test case fail please ignore it we know that sometimes this exception comes or maybe every time this exception comes so please ignore we are not bothered about it please don't mark your test case failed we are expecting this expect, uh, exception so this is the expected exception feature is available in test engine if you because if you don't write this line expected exception exception is equal to element not found exception or element not, not found exception is coming then immediately your test case will be failed but if you want and you know that i am getting this kind of and it can be anything it can be null pointer exception array index out of bound exception stale element reference exception it can be anything so if any exception is coming and if you have defined that yes we are expecting this then it will not mark your test case as failed okay guys this test ng is little tricky and technical so if you are first time if you are seeing this video and then you are not aware about test ng and you haven't watched these three four videos then you cannot understand these interview questions so that's why i i would advise you first please go through these videos and then jump to interview question otherwise it will be a totally bouncer for you you won't be able to understand that what is assertion what is at the rate annotations and all those stuff right so please go through it each and everything i have written over here okay each and everything i have explained in my videos with the help of proper coding proper examples and everything it's a very simple coding don't worry about it okay how to set priority priority so many times i have told you that uh, inside the at the rate test annotation we have to define the priority keyword right 
so this is a let the at the rate this is a test case at the rate priority equal to zero and this is a second test case at the rate priority equal to one so the first it will execute this one and then it will execute this one right like this so the sequence will be this it will print test case one and then it will print test case two okay what is parameterized testing in test ng so we can do two types of parameterization in test ng first is with the help of at the rate parameters okay annotation that we have already i have already explained just i explained like this this is the at the rate uh, parameter parameters we have to use and we are parameterized this particular test case second thing is that we can use data provider guys okay so what do you mean by data provider data provider is, is an annotation at the rate data provider and data provider will do uh, will provide the uh, parameterization it will pick the data from any source and then it will uh, transfer that data into the into that particular test case and then it will execute that particular test case n number of times okay so same test case can be executed i'll give you the best example let's see login test and username password i have 10 username 10 password so no need to create 10 login methods 10 login test cases no single login test case having username password and then we can pass you can maintain this username password in excel file and then you can pass all these 10 username password okay to this test case with the help of data provider so how to use data provider we have we, we have at the rate data provider annotation is available and i have already explained over here so please guys go through this video and it's really really important video guys so please go through it and i'm pretty much sure that okay you will understand what is data provider and everything okay so data provider in annotation see i have i'm passing all these values from excel file and to to my code like this okay to go to my code like this i have written one at the rate method over there and then okay so data providers the written type of object array and everything i have explained properly i cannot explain guys as of now so you will understand this proper answer once you see this video okay once you watch this video then only you will be able to understand but for theoretical point of view there are two types of uh, parameterization we can do first at the rate parameters and second one is at the rate data provider how can we achieve data driven testing again with the help of at the rate data provider we can use simple okay so data driven approach with test ng we have to use at the rate data provider annotation is the most important annotation is in in test ng and for interview point of view 100 percent they will ask okay how will you run a group of test cases uh, using test ng although this not very important question because generally we don't use the grouping concept most of the time but you can write like this that uh, practical example i'll give you that at the rate test group equal to smoke test and functional test okay and then these are the different tags i define inside a test ng.xml file so i have already explained in my videos please go through it if you want to ignore this question you can ignore it also it's not very important okay grouping and everything you just need to know how to define the grouping but how to execute multiple groups all together okay you just need to have a look otherwise you can ignore this question also how to create a group in test ng simple very simple that simple group in test ng.xml file this is the format you have to use groups okay you can write like group name is define name is smoke test and functional test like this okay and over here also you can define like this that uh, a group at the at the rate test group equal to smoke test and functional test okay like that also you can define okay to define the grouping is very simple they might ask that tell me how to define the grouping so simple at the rate test groups equal to like this okay yes now the important question very important that how to run test cases in parallel using test ng very straightforward answer that we have to use parallel attribute okay guys we have to use parallel attribute like this i'll show you in uh, test ng.xml this is a sweet level and then you have to use parallel attribute guys what exactly the par uh, parallel attribute value will be there i want that all the methods should be executed in parallel mode you can define parallel equal to class also parallel equal to methods also you can write 
okay it means whatever the methods i have written it will be executed in parallel mode and one more thing we have to define guys that is called so uh, what is the value of parallel parallel it can be methods it can be test also okay it can be test also it can be classes also it can be methods also it can be instances also okay so these four values you can give with the parallel attribute generally we give parallel equal to methods okay and uh, how many browser let's say you want to launch so we have to use like this thread count equal to five it means i want to generate five threads it means at a time you can execute you can launch five different browsers five chrome browsers also you can use okay let's see i have five test cases so simple five test cases and if you're given a thread count equal to five at a time five browsers will be launched test one will be executed on first browser test two will be executed in second browser three on third fourth on fourth and fifth one is on fifth browser it means all the test cases are running parallelly right so this is parallel testing although i haven't created this video i know i missed that video definitely i'll create this video that parallel testing once we cover the selenium grid definitely i'll cover that part guys how to exclude particular test method from a test case execution yes how to exclude so simple let's see inside this particular home home page test or uh, context home page test i have this particular test three test cases are there right i want that okay i don't want to execute this verify contacts link test so what i'll do <clears throat> i'll go to this particular thing okay let me uncomment this thing first right and this is the class level and i know that home page test i want to <clears throat> so simple you have to use this particular thing guys inside the class name like this in home page test i know there are some methods three methods are there okay but i want to exclude this particular method verify context links test method i want to exclude so simple exclude tag you have to use exclude name equal to this okay so what exactly test ng will do first it will execute this particular test case login page test <clears throat> all the classes or uh, all the methods of this particular class will be executed then it will try to execute home page it will go to home page test now it will check three methods are there it will be executed this will be executed but this will be excluded it will be ignored why because we have written like this excluded like this okay so you can write like this also exclude how to exclude a particular test group from a test case execution okay so same thing particular group also if you want to uh, if you want to exclude now you have to define in the form of groups like this group run and group exclude method is this okay so this particular test case from that particular group will be ignored okay how to disable a test case in test ng very simple you just go to let's see i don't want to execute this particular method i want to skip or i want to exclude just like exclude or how to disable so what you have to do is comma we have one property enabled is equal to false so now if you run this program this particular test case will be ignored i have already covered this topic in part one okay this feature in part one i have already covered so please have a look same thing that enabled equal to false we have to tell at the type of interview they might ask you at a time of interview that how to ignore or how to disable simple enabled equal to false okay state dependencies yes we have one uh, depends on method and depends on uh, uh, groups okay these two keywords are available okay let's see i want that okay this particular test case let me remove this enabled equal to so we have this depends on methods is equal to which method let's see this particular test case is dependent on this so i can write like this okay depends on methods equal to verify username if it is getting failed it will be ignored it will not be executed if it is getting passed then only it will be executed right very very important guys okay they will ask you at a time of interview that this particular test case having one property depends on method equal to this 
it means this method is totally dependent on this if it is getting failed then test ng will not execute it okay very straightforward it will ignore it but if this particular test case is getting passed okay then this particular test case will be executed okay so this is the feature of depends on method and same thing you can use it for depends on groups also okay now what are the different ways to uh, produce reports for test change result so simple different ways that first of all we have uh, index.html file is available in test change that is if you go to test output folder okay here it is test output folder you will see that index.html file is there okay test change report uh, test change result.xml file is also available okay and now what are the different uh, listeners are available the, one of the very famous listener is that that is i reporter listener and i test listener with the help of these listeners you can generate very good report you can customize your report also okay although it's all together it's a different topic but they won't ask you how will you generate and what is what are the different customization you have to do but we have to tell these two interfaces guys i test listener okay and i reporter listener with the help of these two listeners we can generate very good html report okay in test ng okay what is the use of at the rate listener annotation in test ng again very famous interview question that what is your what is the purpose of listener so the purpose of listener is mainly that to generate the reports and to generate the logs okay so with the help of uh, listeners we can do that let's see i want that okay uh, once the test case start or test case success or test case failure or test case get skipped what kind of report do you want to generate extend report remember extend report they are internally using the this particular uh, listener okay this particular i test listener interface only they are using on top of that they have created the um, okay their library and they have given to us okay so these days we generally we don't use these things because a lot of other th options are available like we have extend report and these things are available but what is the purpose of listener at the rate listener annotation that uh, listeners are used especially for uh, reporter uh, report generation and logging point of view okay so you have to create your own class which is having these listeners interface okay and you have to implement this uh, i listener interface and inside the class you have to use at the rate listeners okay annotation that you have to use simple that is what you have to tell Okay, how to write regular expression? You can ignore this, like uh, uh, dot star smoke dot. So all the classes, all the methods which is having smoke in it or sanity. Okay, let's see. I have one method that login smoke test, search smoke test. So we just need to write uh, dot star smoke dot star. So how many methods are there? Let's see. Hundred methods are there, and fifty methods having word that is smoke. All those cases will be. All those test cases will be executed only. Okay, they might ask at a time of interview. What is a unit we specify in the test suite and test cases? The time unit, obviously in milliseconds. Okay, the time unit uh, generally we define that in milliseconds only. That how much time it should take in milliseconds. So we take. Uh, if you see the report also in test ng, we see that okay, these are things are coming in milliseconds only. Okay, point zero four 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 second means these are the milliseconds. Okay, list out various ways in which test ng can be invoked. So although it's not a great question, that how, invoke means how will you execute test ng? So either we can execute test ng is through Eclipse or through some Maven or Ant also through Maven also. How to do that? Okay, through Maven also I have already explained in page object model tutorial guys. So please refer page object model tutorial how to do that in pom.xml file we have to pass in short fire plugin we have to pass testng.xml I can give you one example over here very quickly that in pom.xml file go to that uh, where is where is pom.xml file yeah here it is pom.xml file and through maven also you can execute testng.xml file like this you have to go to the surefire plugin oh i haven't written over here maybe not in this example but in the tutorial guys you can refer that uh, uh in surefire plugin in 
pom.xml file you have to give the configuration that is the testng.xml configuration that you have to pass okay so through maven and eclipse from command line also and intellij id also you can uh, trigger your testng classes and everything how to run testng using command prompt simple uh, it's a very simple interview question that how to run testng using command prompt so simple that we have to use uh, testng jar file that we need and which class you want to execute and you have to go to that particular directory okay and uh, let's see my testng.java class is available in or maybe test.java class is available in c drive so i'll go to c drive first and then i'll write test so it, it will be like this so i'll first in my command prompt <coughs> i'll go to my c drive right guys in c drive what exactly i'll do in in the command prompt and then i'll go to whatever the let's see library like let's see my uh, in C drive, my folder name is test folder. So that is a test folder. Let's see, in test folder, I am inside a test folder. What exactly I'll do? Simple write Java and whatever the, the lib testng.jar file is available. Let's see, my testng.jar file is available in C drive. So simple, I'll write testng.jar. And what is your file name? Let's see, my file name is test.java. Like this, you have to execute. Okay like this you have to execute generally we don't use this, these things but they might ask you at a type of interview not that a very famous or great question but they might ask you what is invocation count okay in test ng invocation count 10 i'll give you practical example guys very simple let's see i have this particular test case home page title test i want that okay the same test case should be executed 10 times so simple what i'll do i'll simple do like this invocation count is equal to 10 it means the same test case will be executed 10 times single test case will be executed 10 times if i write 100 it will be executed 100 times so this is the purpose of invocation count i have already explained this uh, scenario over here in part 2 okay sometimes we have to let's see same test case we want to execute again and again so we can give invocation count is equal to 5 10 or whatever okay so that is invocation count okay what is uh, thread pool size thread pool size means to generate the threads so if you have given that again at the rate test thread pool size is equal to 10 or 3 so it means three um, threads will be generated okay one pool will be generated having three threads but the thread pool size will only work if okay uh, invocation count is given so generally we don't use this configuration this configuration generally used by developers okay at the time of uh, their uh, unit level test cases but you can say that thread pool size is to generate the threads and it will work only with invocation count okay what do you mean by timeout in test engine okay guys timeout means so i have covered thread pool size invocation count and timeout is equal to let's see i have given 10000 millisecond it means 10 seconds so maximum time i'm giving the for this particular test case 10 so let's see sometime what happens that okay uh, you have written some code and it's taking a lot of lot of time because of uh, page issues or page got stuck somewhere and uh, te test case got stuck somewhere or maybe infinite loop is coming so obviously it's taking a longer time for this particular test case so we can define a limit that boss this particular test case should be executed within 10 seconds if it is going beyond 10 seconds then terminated simple okay simple terminated it will not be invoked okay so this is a property of timeout so we never use timeout property in selenium guys okay because you never know because selenium is taking a lot of time to execute a particular test case and it's our responsibility to make sure that okay test, all the test cases are getting executed but for a developers point of view generally they might use okay but interview point of view it's somewhere important they might ask you what are the at the rate factory and at the rate data provider so at the rate data provider annotation i have already told you to define the to fetch the test data from excel file or uh, you know to provide a test data to the test cases okay in that case uh, we have to use at the rate data provider annotation i have already explained at the rate factory i haven't explained generally we don't use at the rate factory but at the rate factory will execute all the test methods okay which are available inside the particular test class 
using a separate instance of the respective class with different set of data. So at the refactory means I have created let's see a class having different set of data and one test class is available having one test method. So we can define that at the refactory annotation and in which we can define okay this is the class which is giving the data to you. So that class is taking the data maybe somewhere from excel file or whatever doesn't matter and at the rate factory annotation will fetch the data from that particular class and then it will provide it to you to your test cases. So at the rate factory generally we don't use but at the data provider obviously at the rate data provider method will be given uh, will be configured uh, to the test cases and then test case will get the data from at the rate data provider. Okay, so very simple at the rate data provider I have already explained so many times. Okay, guys, so please go through the at the rate data provider over here. This okay, so guys, this is really really useful. You have to cover these top five, I mean, top four, I would say one, two, three, four. Okay, these four tutorials, at least if you really want to clear test engine interviews, hardly it will take guys two hours. Okay, one plus two, I think, yeah, maybe three hours. Okay, three hours of tutorials are there. Please go through it. All the interview questions. 99% doubts will be cleared immediately still if you have any doubts please feel free to contact me in the comment section definitely I'll reply you guys okay and I'll share this uh, uh, this document also with you guys so these are the top 33 yeah, 33 questions I have covered in this tutorial so these are the most important testing I mean test engine interview questions if you are good in these things you can clear now selenium is done test engine is done project description everything is done okay so most of the things you have covered now the small small things that your manual testing or maybe java concepts are pending so if you can cover those things then i think you can clear the interviews but if you're really good in test ng guys definitely they know that they will consider you that this guy is good in test ng is a framework and this guy can write uh, the framework with the help of test ng if they are using existing framework with test ng easily you can understand test ng framework you can debug the code right if you don't know what is annotation what is data provider what is at the rate before at the rate after at the rate test and all then obviously you cannot work so don't go without test ng at the time of interview if you know selenium fine but without test ng obviously you cannot clear interview okay so test ng guys is the most important thing and again please refer this okay test ng framework with selenium tutorial by Naveen Automation Labs. So how to go to that particular video location, I mean the playlist location, go to this playlist. Okay. And this playlist, five videos are there, test ng framework with Selenium tutorials. So in this playlist guys, I have created all the videos. For If you want to cover 15 videos of <coughs> Java, you can start with that. Then 42 videos are there in Selenium. Okay, page object model, around 10 videos are there okay complete page object model four to five videos are there in test ng data driven approach four videos are there okay and then web services and maven and selenium interview questions are there so everything is combined okay in the form of sorry in the form of playlist so you guys you can refer all these playlists and i'm pretty much sure that you will become genius in in selenium okay no one can beat you in the market then okay so please Go through all those things. I have done a lot of hard work to create these videos. Most of the things I tried my best to cover. Okay. And if you really like this video, please share with others and, uh, you know, and if you have any questions, write down in the comments and then uh, subscribe to the channel, guys. Thank you so much.